on, go on. Yeah, live. Yeah, apparently we hey. could be live. We might be live. Hello. I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to another one of my Molten DIY Week escapades. Uh, this evening I'm I'm right chuffed, right, to have uh, Sam with us this evening, who is, oh, I don't know if you're the inventor of, of everything that's interesting in this world at the moment, but you had something to do with this format called Cosmo. Cosmo. Which what, Cosmo, which is what we're going to look at this evening, as well as having a bit of a chat. So yeah. um, before we get too stuck in, uh, can someone just in the chat let us know that you can hear both me and Sam, and then we can go on with confidence without having to worry about well, uh, Funnily enough, I, I, I accidentally didn't have the video muted on the live stream, so I, it just suddenly turned up and it was just loads of, loads of voices, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's live now. Good. <laughs> Yeah, see and hear us. Good, great, good to see. Uh, as usual, I'm I'm kind of backwards. I've got my my all the videos on that machine over there. The chats on this machine over there. And I'm trying to talk to the camera, and Sam is on another screen somewhere else. So I don't really. I'm a bit disorientated, but we will <laughs> we will go with it. Someone's saying your video's a bit choppy. Hang on a sec. I can. I might be able to do something about that. Is it my your video or my no, video? Yours. Mine. Yours. Oh, that's all right. I can just turn it bandwidth down a little bit. And that might help. Oh, I'll open the door as well. I know that sounds stupid. <laughs> you open the door. Yeah, I mean, I'm on my laptop, and the uh, router's over in the uh, in the other in another room. So it was just it seemed right to do it in a uh, in the working space. Oh uh, yeah. Well, maybe you just got to stay it... a bit still. That that's the that's the important thing. Don't flap about too much. Yeah, as long as the audio's okay, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So Just what have you been up to still. recently? Anything you had? Uh, I noticed you released an EP. That's really good. I got hold of a copy oh, of that. Oh, thank you. It's lovely uh, and yeah, pink yeah. And in the vinyl. I, I like that. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's good to have a vinyl up. In fact, uh, the back, uh, I had loads of floppy drive, floppy disks. I'll just grab one. Oh, oh, God. Where is it? I've got uh, the floppy disks on the back. Uh, it was just, oh, yeah, you yeah. see the, the writing of it. Uh, so I just took the picture with the blue tack from there, and there's the writing of it for the background. You can see <laughs> nice. it's, it's just, just uh, anyway, choppy. Hopefully, it isn't choppy still, but we'll see. We'll see. Just laggy video. Ah, there's nothing we can do. But so, yeah, you're building today some Cosmo format things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, it's awesome. It's awesome. So, yeah. That, yeah, like well, I, I know. I remember you got them. Uh, yeah. Did you get them when the delay came out? Uh, I think it, it was, it was about something that like time. that. Yeah, you'd you ju you just started doing like a module a month. This was like just mm -hmm. just around lock time, lockdown time, wasn't it? And yes. um, uh, I spotted it and thought, I had no idea you did such a thing, and what a brilliant idea! Because <laughs> uh, I yeah, with my. Because the I mean the concept to throw the concept out there is to make Eurorack bigger. So like if I find a Eurorack module, because I just have them knocking around. It's a Eurorack module, Cosmo. It's a bit of a difference. <laughs> it's, it's quite a lot bigger, yeah. Bit of a difference. Yeah. But the the plan is so that you can make it more usable in a live situation. And it's certainly been my experience that trying to do Eurorack live is like a spectacular idea that you then get pulled in so tightly to this machine that you can't see, it's too dark, you can't find the knobs, you've patched it up too tightly because you've traveled with it. And it just ends up being a bit of a, a bit of a fiddle. <laughs> it doesn't feel very uh, performance like. Yeah, so, that, that's, that's what happens, yeah. Yeah, and so and making I, it bigger, like, genius. Mm, well, yeah, initially like uh, I started this module a month, um, at the start of this year because I realized that uh, the, the, the synth that I take on tour, which was all behind it, was all stripboard, was just breaking down and stuff. So right. my main goal was to be able to have, you know, slowly have a more reliable synthesizer by making the all the synths, all the modules, you know, proper, <laughs> if you see what I mean. So <laughs> and like the way it is, is like it's 20 centimeters tall. So it's metric 5U in the way. You know, it seems to make more sense. Twenty centimeters metric. Like, yeah, yeah. why, why, why are we all in imperial still? So, it's just a little thing. But um, yeah, like, uh, there's there's a lot of them now. There's like, 
I think there's about 11 out now and there's going to be a couple more coming in in a week or so. There's like a mega drone ones which are massive. It's not that big. Humongous things. So well, yeah. I got I got a selection because I mean my plan was uh, I'm going to buy uh, or build rather a Cosmo synth, a working synth. So you know your standard awesome. sort of sort of synth voice bits. So out of that I've got this is I have no clue what that is. That's the filter. That's the filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, nice. I always try to make the backs a lot more uh, vibrant than the fronts, except <laughs> yeah. for the uh, except for the oscillator. That one's not as interesting as some of them. Yeah. Does it matter which way around you put it? Is that a... annoyingly so? Because I tried to make them symmetrical a lot of them. Oh but yeah. It's just um, yeah, it doesn't work. So the panels are sadly not uh, reversible, but. Oh, I see. You know, you just you there. just get to enjoy it from the background, like a, yeah, like yeah. um, secret know, messages. Just an engineer. Yeah, secret messages in the back, artwork <laughs> and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so there's you... a big, stupidly large filter, which just—I mean, that's because that's what you need. That's what you're going to be leaning on the whole time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that is the biggest one. I mean, uh, the, funnily enough, the next one that's coming out is a much smaller filter Ooh. and it's got a distortion and a vca in it and a voltage controlled it's got look at the pictures of the capacitor and the transistor on it so this one is the next one but the one that you've got in front of you was oh that's the lfo voltage yeah. controlled uh it's got like yeah I can't yeah remember how many 25 different waveforms of lfo ness nice lfo -ness. that's a bit yeah. more of a reasonable panel that one i could i could handle that i think <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it came with a chip. What's the chip about? Is that important? Oh, which chip? It's hard oh, to find. that is the yeah, druid that is the chip. chip that yeah, it's based on the electric druid uh, VC LFO uh, chip. Okay. Which is uh, I just had a chat to him and I was like, maybe we should I should include them with it instead of you know people ordering one here and there and then you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just it just seems like pointless postage because a lot of them if you go over to the forum, uh there's a there's a forum page called Cheap Component Search and then you find out which country you live in and you put pretty much all of the components all on one shop, depending what country you're in. But you know, I see over on your uh on your table that you have <laughs> uh, uh where did you go to? Rapid for some of them. Yeah, well, I mean, mine's mine's a bit of a pathetic story, I have to say, in terms of <laughs> putting this together. Because, I mean, my, my plan ultimately was to start this up as a project after I've finished the Deckard's Dream. But because the dream was taking t so long, I thought I, yeah. need to, I need to kickstart this thing. Otherwise, it's just going to sit around. So I thought, yeah, if I do this, um, if I do this week of, of stuff, I'll, I'll just force myself to do it. And so, of course, I panicked about two weeks ago thinking I don't have any components. And... Yeah, you know, I spent a few hours <laughs> looking at the spreadsheet and going, all right, Mouser or Farnell or, you know, where's my nearest Maplin? And yeah, uh, just Maplin. ended up, yeah, and just ended up clicking on all the all the links that are in the spreadsheet and ordering whatever it was I could find. So I've got like 50 IC holders because they do them in slightly larger quantities than I was expecting. And uh, so that's, uh, been, yeah, that's, that's been quite fun. It's getting, good bundles of stuff that's, and i figure I'll, yeah i'm gonna use them down the line yeah you will that's the thing it's like if you're gonna build one of these you're gonna yeah. end up building a whole synth setup so it might be an uncomfortable beginning but there's lots <laughs> of people on the forum to help and stuff and then you will be amazed by the next time you build it yeah it'll yeah. just be really easy to figure yeah. it out it's just it's just jumping in the first the first thing so but you're doing it yeah i'm doing <laughs> it man i am i mean i mean that was part of the uh, I mean, part of the struggle is getting over that initial hump because it's scary. I mean, I, I did try to source the components for the Deckard's Dream. And I sat there with the multiple pages of spreadsheet going through it with mouse of builds and trying to total everything up. And it just melted me to nothing. I, was like, I just couldn't cope with it. Molten? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I ended up just buying the kit from SynthCube because they do the whole lot in a, in a box. It's like, oh, do they I'll, do the whole... I'll, just, I'll just do that. That's, that's a um, big project, though. It's it a is, massive yeah. project. It is. And it, obviously it was the first time I'd done that kind of sourcing. And so it was just a bit nuts. But for this, I wanted to spend a bit more time on it. And I reckon I could do it and go through the forum and work out all those bits. But I just didn't give myself the opportunity to do it for this 
for this thing. So I'm a bit kind of, I don't know what I'm doing. I tried to count out all yeah. the components this afternoon and I'm missing a couple of capacitors, I think. Um, Which some ones? Re- uh, to be honest, you could probably get away with a few not being there. See. So it depends which ones you're talking about. See, it's really interesting you say things like that because that boggles my mind. Sorry, I'm trying to find, I printed <laughs> out the thing and now I can't find it. Um, yeah, yeah, it depends which ones. There are, I think, about two or three capacitors that are required for functioning. The other ones are just for filtering. So it okay. depends, like it's just to, uh, usually the filtering involves just to kind of, um, if something else is acting a bit weird on the power supply that you've got, it, stop, it stops that from affecting this and stuff like that. So it depends. I mean, uh, I'm sure you'll find them, but I have a feeling, I mean, they might be um, uh, substituted as well quite quickly. So yeah. I'm sure, are you just going to start building? I, I'm going to build yeah, yeah. one now as well. Okay. Screw it. I'm going uh, to put one together. So, yeah, all right. So let me let me just do a, a camera adjust. If I press the right button, let's see. Oh, you've got it set up all properly. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, oh, it's gone all echoey now. Has, Has it? it? Is that me? It might have been me. No. Oh, it could have been you. Oh, it probably was me. Don't worry okay. about it. Anybody yeah, been noticing yeah, thing in the, the chat? Let us know. Oh yeah, it has. You've got, you've managed. I think that that scene has got an extra audio input. Hang on. Do, do, do. I've got it from there. Hang on. It's this one. Yeah. Hang on. That is that better? Hey, yeah. Okay. It's a lot quieter though. You might need to turn the level up of the direct or whatever the mic. It's a different uh, level to what it was. Oh no, it's it's fine. Don't listen to me. It's just because I tu- it's because I turned away from the mic. See, that's all. Is- I oh, turned I away from the mic to Brit. What is that? Uh, chocolate rain. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> no. I don't it's know. like he's got a little label. It says I turned away from the mic to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm just trying to get myself settled, right? I don't know what oh, I'm good. doing. So I'm going to be signed. There's the camera. Right, this is the thing. So there's the front panel. I'm not going to need that anytime soon, I shouldn't think. Probably not. So, I think so. I'm going to... So I've got everything bagged up. I've got my Arduino. We. I've got uh, that, that thing. So I am also missing a couple of resistors, but, you know... Such as life. Depends which ones. Depends which ones. Because <laughs> <laughs> you say you've got 50 of other ones. I'm pretty sure we can figure this out. Yeah, yeah. Because you can string them together, can't you, ultimately? Uh, it's not even that. It just depends. Like, there's multiple ones that are acting like um, uh, voltage dividers, for instance. That's a technical term. And yeah. so you can just substitute them with other ones. It's totally possible. Like, uh, I... Well, I remember. I remember the first time I built a DIY synth project. I can't remember what it was. I think it was a music from outer space project. And yeah, I I can, I, I can totally empathise uh, the frustration of not finding something. But usually, when I don't find something, I just shove something else in, <laughs> and it's usually fine. <laughs> See, it, I'm too scared to do that sort of thing because I don't actually. I mean, the, I was talking about this with Steve from Thonk last night in in the live stream, and I don't actually. Even though I've probably spent a year or so building kits, I've not really learned anything about circuit design. I've learned how to solder, and I've learned how to follow instructions, but I've I still don't really know which bit is does what. Yeah, you know? it's just a I'm just filling holes with with components. That's but and, that I, and I'd like time. to come. Yeah, and I'd like to I'd like to move on from that. Yeah, and I, hopefully, like, I'll try and explain sort of what's going on here. Like, I can imagine the Deckard's dream, for instance. Yeah. Probably a bit, a bit difficult to f- get your head around the functioning. <laughs> yeah, totally. Of yeah. such a large and elaborate, awesome, nonetheless machine. Is it work? It's it's not finished yet, is it? No, no. I've got the voice cards to do. I'm going to do some of those on Saturday. Go try oh, to get some of that done on Saturday. Bits. Yeah, exactly. I've done all the all the all the hardware on the front and the motherboard and stuff. It's just the voice cards to do. So that's yeah. a fair few, fair few bits. So, so what, what are you going to start with? Well, I don't know. Good question. Usually with the lowest things, which tend to be resistors, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Just get all the resistors down. If so, you think, uh, and then we'll find out which ones you don't have. Yeah. And I'll just um, I'll just, I'll throw them over the laptop. Thank you. <laughs> so what was so special about the? 
The what? Who? Is that is that rapid? Oh, yeah, you yeah. Them. Well, yeah, yeah. I spent this, spent some of this afternoon trying to work out because no, because yeah, because from the from the the list from the spreadsheet, it sends you to eBay where you buy like a hundred weight of resistors. Uh, you know, uh, you click I probably on, should update that one. You click on <laughs> buy now down. bunch of resistors, and so I did. So uh, I got like I got like this turn up, and uh, oh my god! And it's like, oh, well, they, yeah. they should be in there, although sadly not all the ones I need are. I also oh, noticed that still... he'll, yeah, he'll, they, they do the they do the job. They do the resisting, don't they? Okay, I'm thing. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna update that today. I'm gonna try and update a, make a better link, a bit more definite. But uh, the thing is, is the second you get over this learning curve hump yeah. of resistors wires, you're gonna be, you know, you'll be able to put together um, most things out of. That's another thing that I try and concentrate with these on from my set for my sanity is to make sure that they all share most of the components are shared. Yeah. So yeah. if you buy too many of one thing, you could probably plop together another different thing completely with the same stuff. Because the amazing thing about most uh, synthesizer designs and circuits is they're a lot of the same <laughs> same things in different uh, orientations. Yeah. That's why you notice a lot of the same chips, I guess, yeah. if you're building things, you'd notice. But yeah, I guess we'll do the resistors first. So just call them out when you're building them, and I'm going to put them into this one. Well, you on your list, you did it in uh, size order, didn't you? So I've got 100R first for R27. I don't know if it's easier to do that. Oh, see, I put masking tape on, and now that's going to that's gonna do me in because I'm not going to be able to get it off. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Now, of course, strictly speaking, I should get my multimeter out, shouldn't I? And, and make sure it's the right size thingy, but I might just stick it in and see how it goes. Oh, this one. Ah, just, just go for it. <laughs> go for it. R27, there it is. Look, oh, look, you've labelled it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't so know where that one is. You found you've, it quicker than I have. Yeah, it's over here. You labelled it with the, the number R27 and the value of the resistor at the same time. That's pretty awesome. Yes, however, place. immediately I've noticed in this one, uh, this was one of the very early ones that came out and there's actually going to be a newer oscillator coming out soon. But I've realized I've looked up and there's like R18 is missing a value. So that needs to run from the things. But I try to make sure that you can build it without using a bill of materials at all. You could just look at it, look at your collection of whatever components you have and just pop them in. So yeah, R27, nice. where the where the so fudge is that? It's over there near <laughs> the uh, the header, near your smiley face. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, more than that. Oh, down there. I was looking at the wrong one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I might be oh, upside yeah. down. That's a yeah, possibility. Yeah, yeah, it's confusing me a bit. Boom. It's in. What's next? Um, I'm, try I'm trying to find... <laughs> Uh, R42, which is a 200. R42 is... It? Are you in number order on this? Or are you just scattered all over the place? R42, um, there you go. Is... Okay. Top Any corner. The me on this. They usually... They are quite... Um, quite ordered, but still... I haven't built this one in so long. <laughs> trying to think. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, you said I got confused when you said top corner. I was just realised you've got the board upside down. Board so upside down. All right. The... Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't matter. I'll I'll work to you what you're doing. <laughs> so I'll try the second guess now, and I'll call it the wrong way up, which will just confuse you further. Yeah, yeah. R three. Oh no. I'm looking for an R2 now. What are you on? R2, which is uh, 470. Ah, uh, yeah. 470 ohms. Ah. Uh. Can you point it out at home? Anyone at home point it out? For <laughs> me, I can find it. I'm trying to find... Are you looking for R2? I found, like, R7 is 470R. And that is just about, like, just below the semicircle. I'm trying to find R2 really quick. 
There is another one of these, 470 R2. Ohms. No, that's not. Is that? Yeah, it is. R2 is right in the middle. Oh, yeah. Blimey. R70, 70 to semicircle. 13, 17, 25. There it is, R7. So this is not exactly what you'd call speed assembly. Uh, after after building a couple, it gets it gets much quicker. <laughs> six eighty, I've got next, which is six hundred eighty. R six. R six. There's only one of those, I think. So, ooh, gonna get out my six of ooh, rustly bags. You are, right, man. All good. Yeah, I'm coming to say bye. Oh, bye. Have a lovely one. I'll see you at home. Have you found that one? Oh, I found yeah, that straight away. Uh, six yeah. in the middle somewhere. Da -da. One Ks, one Ks, one Ks. There you are. Oh, we're all up to the one Ks now. See, my labelling was good. It was definitely a good thing to do. How many one Ks does it say there, there are? Two. R10 and R36. Okay. R36. And R10. R10. So have you been able to gig at all with the uh, you know the problems that nah. we're having? Oh, nah, nah, no no shows. Well, I'm I'm currently I'm currently <laughs> I'm currently uh, very busy setting up a museum, so it's quite a lot oh, of right. work. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's it's preposterous. Like we're currently in a um, uh, a very temporary workshop in the museum because it's taking so much time that I figured I should probably do the working for the YouTube videos whilst I'm here. So yeah, it's it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy trying to set up a museum. It's been a dream of mine for a very long time. And um, I figured, it, I was looking at the prices for storage for all of the, um, all of the builds that I was making, and it was not gonna cost much, much more, mass, much more than, not much more than, you know, to do a museum. <laughs> so this is, pretty this is off, your own, off your own bat. It's not for the V&A or something like that. No, no. Um, I'm I'm working with my partner Melanie, who is um, looking at funding for next year, trying to figure that stuff out. But like, uh, yeah, uh, getting in in touch with a lot of other YouTube creators. Uh, just been chatting to uh, Colin Furs, trying to figure out if there's anything that he can we can have here because there's quite a lot of space. So it's just building it up, sorting out all of the boring stuff. It should be good. Like, there's um, you just. I'm just gonna pull this just really quick. Turn your head around and check out the owl organ. <laughs> you can see. Can you see the owl organ? Yeah. There's uh, no, there's an owl organ, but it's a. Uh, that's a very empty room, but there's it go, rooms go on. It's uh, a lot of crap. <laughs> it, it legitimizes my hoarding addiction. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Man. <laughs> anyway, yeah. back to this. You'd be able to keep saying, yeah, yeah, never throw anything away. Okay, I don't have a 1.8 and I don't have a 2K. Um, uh, 11 2Ks, that's going to be a little bit vital. Sadly, I had no okay. 2Ks. Well, do you have any 1Ks? Um... <laughs> left. Do you have any 1Ks left? As in, like, do you have, did you buy a bunch yes. of Yes. Uh, yeah, um, I'll, have some, I'll have some 1Ks. They might take me a bit to find. Maybe we'll come back to that later. Okay, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that because yeah, you can substitute those two Ks uh, with one Ks. I realise after this one that the two Ks are a little bit uh, less standard than two point two Ks, two K twos. I'll have I do a look have at the one K. Yeah, I do have two K two. I do have two K twos actually. Oh, they just, do... just use just use those, and I'll quickly check now to see if the one K eight is uh, at all important. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm going to look at the schematic really quick. And uh, like, this is great because it's just um, trying to figure out, you know, in real times, because, you know, you can spend so much time designing and building something and then trying to put it in the, in the hands of somebody idiots. who's competent like yourself. No, not idiots, <laughs> but, God you bless know, you, but, love. 
Uh, right, where is the 1K8? I got a 2K2s. Cool, just plop 2K2s wherever you see 2Ks. Okay. 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. Okay. Sounds like they might all be together. Yeah, they will be. They're all at the top. 28. They are acting as the... Uh, so basically, they... they, they, they uh, what do they do? <laughs> they, they limit the current going through the... Um, the uh what is it the seven segment display because there's no oh, yeah. to keep the circuit to keep the circuit simple uh the seven segment display is not is being driven directly by the um by the arduino okay. and it's staying underneath its current consumption value but usually in a normal circuit you would use transistors or something like a driver to drive it but that just makes the circuit more complicated when it doesn't need to be gotcha so Lots is the of is the Arduino there for the tuning? Is that its purpose? That's the tuner. So all the Arduino is doing is tuning. And uh, I, I should say for everybody else, you can get away with just buying the £2 ones off eBay. You don't need to buy a proper proper one. How nice. much was the proper one? I have no idea. Uh. <laughs> it, I mean, the whole lot. I mean, the panel set is only, what, 30 quid or something, isn't it? Um, yeah, if, it would cost that, like... And the components, yeah, if, yeah, it was not too bad at all. And I and I'm built. I've got two of them, so actually I built double. Um, okay, that's that's uh, good for the lot. Actually, I want to detune. You see, it's my thing at the moment. I have to have two oscillators uh, at all times. Yes, yes, most definitely. Or three, if you really want to jump for it. So one k eight. Oh dear, no, that's right. That's also do which. Uh, the labeling you put on the bottom, don't you? Of the thing you're doing. Uh, okay. Which ones are you looking at? So thirty-two. Oh yeah, this one. This is where it got a bit confusing because I managed to miss the two K value. So R eighteen, R thirty two, R thirty three, R thirty four. All of those in that box, the eight in that box, can just stay two Ks. They're all two yeah. Ks. Gotcha. I'm just still looking at that 1K8 and seeing if it's all important. If it doesn't matter if it can become a 2K2. CM data sheet. Let's have a look at the data sheet. That's my chair, sorry. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird. Um, uh, what is that? Is that, is that a car? No, it's a heli helicopter. We get helicopters from the oil rigs come over about this time of night. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. You can hear it quite nicely. Yeah. Going into Norwich Airport. Oh, that's that. That was eight of those. So, where else am I going? I went to 34, 35. That's a 37. Oh, oh! Look, my print out. I've I've lost the. <laughs> I didn't get all of them on me print. <laughs> I got as far as thirty-seven. I got a comma, and then I don't know what happens after that. So it's probably something else, I think. So let's have a look. At some other two Ks. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Thirty-eight, thirty-nine. Yep. Yeah, okay. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. I just had a look. I am like, blopping around, but it's all good. Right, I've I've got I was um looking at the uh one K eight, I got completely lost. So we're still on the two Ks, right? Yeah. On the two Ks. Eleven of them, correct? That's right. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two Are they all around the same place? They are. You got that eight in a group and then the the rest are just either beneath it to the edge or above it, depending which way you're looking at it. So like yeah, that. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Like that. Lovely. Yeah, that's good. Uh, well, that was cool. Yeah, but we can we out. have a race, Infinite Machinery? Yeah, I don't, cheers, I don't know about a race. Four K seven, four K seven. Okay, I'm 
I'm going to get ahead. Hello, hello, Sean. Uh, when should I plan a trip to uh, muse the museum? Uh, my best suggestion is to wait for the whole uh, coronavirus stuff to be over and done with. I'm planning on opening before that. However, it's going to be the bare minimum stuff, so not everything is going to be functioning. That is a bit of a work in progress. So uh, it'll be better to come like after the whole, yeah, <laughs> pandemic thing. <laughs> Still putting in the two Ks. What are you on? Four uh, K seven, I think. Number fifteen. I found it. So, as a museum, is it of of you? Is it essentially a, an art no. installation of your own bits, or is it stuff you've acquired? Well, it's a bit of both. So basically, it started because, like I said, the storage thing and being a rampant hoarder. But then it's just uh, I've always had an aim and a, a, a jokey aim of uh, starting a museum just to celebrate um, obsolete and experimental technology. So it's yeah. just going to be a whole load of crap. Like nice. there's yeah, <laughs> it's just just a whole load of things. And there's going to be an interactive part and stuff, and there'll be residencies and whatnot. But all a work in progress. No, nice. it's very. It'll, it'll be sorted soon. Like, yeah, <laughs> very strange. Like, it just seems that, like, Eng like for instance, so going to uh, Bifaco in Barcelona. Yeah. Like they had a really cool community hub um, in Berlin. There's a great community hub situation going on, and like, you know, um, sadly the common ground is closed, but Patch Point and things, places like that, and then sort of maker places. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, sort of maker, but you know, I'd, yeah, and just interactive things. In Switzerland, has got that uh, this mem, so it's just like, where what's what's going on in England? Not much, <laughs> not a lot. I mean, maybe I please suggest one that is going on. Well, the the Norwich Synthesizer Synthesizer Society Club thing. We meet up, or well, we used to hey. meet up back in the day. Uh, you know, three yeah. or four of us in a in a dodgy crypt somewhere um in norwich playing farty noises but uh it was yeah. nice always a good time always a good time that is cool so what, what was that called the norwich synthesizer norwich synth society is it on facebook see i can't remember now have we changed our name I norwich no Synth society yeah that's cool sit around your whole time just trying to come up with a decent name for it without actually doing it's a very good else. point there's a lot of really good societies for instance i went to what was it i, I drove heim back to a gig one time it was uh <laughs> the older shot older shot synth i can't remember the name of the, the name but it was really cool like um yeah it was like in a place so it's like um it's less of a meetup area it's more just a full of shit basically just full of stuff and i shouldn't swear i'm sorry i <laughs> that's all right it's a swear friendly thing it's we're, late time we late, late night telly yeah late night telly is pretty much past the watershed and um did you see that i don't know whether you what are you at 10 k's um <laughs> no no i'm not there hang on i've just got up to <sighs> the uh, i don't have the 24k that's the other one i'm missing and then R9 oh, yes. is this 10K slash 47K. Yeah, so the 10K slash 47K. It all depends. Uh, usually I go for in the middle. So if you have anything that's about 20K, just plop that in. If you haven't, 10K will do fine. Uh, what chip are you using? The AS3340 or the CEM3340? Ah, I got it from... Where is that? I got it from Thonk. Where did so you I think get it? Yeah, uh, Thonk. I think they're the CMs. One? No, I think it was CM, the real deal. So. Oh, it is. Yeah, there's no the so same three hundred and forty. The real deal, you'd be wanting ten k. Pop a ten k in it. Okay. So it basically, uh, this is the one thing that differs with the uh, CEM thirty three forty and the copy, which is the AS thirty three forty, is the pull down resistor on the square wave out. But nine times out of ten, <laughs> I just uh, you can swap them around i'm really not sure whether it makes a lasting difference but i guess time will tell so you can yeah, get away yeah. getting a buzzing with anything or on oh i'm missing loads of them i've got the 5k you've done the 5k6 and stuff already haven't you i have yeah yeah i've snuck that in so also, but also the, 
carry yeah. on. I say I like the fact that the labeling is outside the component. I mean, I know you've put some of the values inside occasionally, which is okay, but often yeah. when I'm building a kit and you've put things in, you can no longer see what it was that was, you know, no longer see the component <laughs> number, if you know what I mean. So yeah, having that's the, very the printing point. on the outside of that is really good. Like that, like that. Okay, well, that's good to, that's good to know. I'll keep on doing that. And also the 1K8, you can get away with a 2K2. It's fine. If you 1, have 8, to. 1.8K. That's R8. R8, 2.2. Yeah, pretty sure. Pretty sure that's going to be all right. I mean, what would if happen... If the worst happens... If it wasn't sorry? right. What would happen if it wasn't right? Uh, it's on the... Uh, what pin is that? It is on the... I'm just trying to find out. Uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to look on the actual... Uh, <laughs> on the on the computer. This, it's only showing me in a very limited... Where is... I will find out the answer. Okay. Well, or we will find out soon. <laughs> if you get, I reckon you could get it done, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Probably not. Actually, I'm, well, I'm not sure whether. I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference. And if it doesn't, it will be not something that burns. It will be something that just. <laughs> it, it seems to be connected to a um, pin on one of those ICs. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Connected to pin 14 of the CEM3340, yeah. which I, I'm just looking at the flow, flow diagram and I can't remember exactly. It seems to be the bias going into the out of the precision multiplier in. Oh, right. right oh, right. it doesn't. It won't make a difference. It, won't, it, it just seems to be. Well, I, like, I like my precision multipliers to be properly restricted. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> point taken. <laughs> well, it's going to be more restricted now. This is because true. It's got a larger resistor on there. This, this is, is true. true. This is true. Uh, I must be running out. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> I'm looking for hundreds now. R14. I'm on hundreds, hundreds. Oh more. blimey! You've, you've sped sped way past. Cool. Oh, There's a hundred. Uh, That's not the one I'm after. It's a twenty-four. Usually I just uh, plonk in whenever you see a hundred K just plonk one in until you run out of hundred K's. Yeah, that's true. But I'm Again. not I'm not I'm not gonna judge. I've just dropped the one hundred K shelf all over the desk. Oh no. They've all gone everywhere. See if you got one of these lovely shells with blue uh, blue buckets on it. Uh, blue buckets, not quite. I'll, I'll show you. I'll turn it around. It's just uh, one of the. I just got like shelves and shelves of resistors and stuff. Oh, you nice. see, just just yeah, loads yeah. of random random ones. They build up over time. Like this is the thing. If you catch the bug, then you're going to have these shelves yes. all over the place. Yeah, because currently I have these these lovely blue bucket things, but they're just full of crap. They don't have anything of any use <laughs> in them at all. They'll but people do become... admire them. People do admire them. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, I like your blue buckets. Yeah, exactly. Alexander Alexander says, is it possible different resistors will force different force sound to change? Uh, it depends which resistor, Alexander Alexander. Um, some of them can drastically change the sound of whatever it, whatever you're making. Some of them don't actually make much of a difference. And some of them can cause things to burn, but that's quite minimal, <laughs> so it's all right. Um, yeah, that's it, uh, Mr. Vane. Uh, love that these are with actual components. Don't ever replace with SMD. Yeah, I mean, uh, SMD just seems to me it's totally doable, especially for even for a, a, a beginner and stuff. I was amazed at how simple it is. It's it's fun and yeah. simple, but it just always it just I don't know. I just never really gelled with surface mount stuff like have you done surface mount before yeah yeah and i, I yeah i've definitely developed a, a method you know by hand with a pair of tweezers i'm not i don't want to stick it in an oven i don't want to use a heat gun i've just got a soldering iron pair of tweezers magnifying yeah. glasses things and yeah i'm away but it's not it's not comfortable and the number of times i've had to search through my carpet trying to find the bloody oh, things yeah. as they go off your table or twang or whatever so yeah I'm happy to 
to be able to do it but i would i wouldn't choose to by any stretch yeah well there's some good ones that are uh, people that like through hole uh, myself there are a few uh, ones that have um, limited, been limited to surface mount, for instance, uh, the mutable instruments circuits and stuff like that. A few yeah. have been ported over to through hole, so you can find through hole projects and circuit boards and stuff. And 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 also, I think I think through hole looks it's got a better aesthetic to me. It does. Yeah. Mount. Looks like a computer. <laughs> looks yeah. like when you open your Mac. R24, yeah. But there are a lot of uh, pros to using surface mount. You can fit a lot more in. Yeah. It's questionably a lot neater to make and stuff. You don't need to sniff a load of legs. You can just have it on the board. You don't have to turn it over to do circuits. So there's a lot of arguments either way. Yeah. Where where are you? I think I've just put in all my 100Ks. So I'm to 470s, four of those. Is there four of those? Wow. Four, seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and twenty. Ooh. Oh no. It's uh it's pretty cool like uh, doing it like this because yeah, it's just uh learning a lot actually, uh with um how other people build and stuff and uh doing it on something that I've made is, is yeah. something quite quite new to me like and it's quite a good exp it's quite an interesting experience and nice. I can imagine this is how people like Bifarco and stuff do with when they're doing their um what are they called their workshops have you ever been yeah. to any synthesizer workshops I have not no I've just sort of picked it up and given it a go and then um my uh, well, I spend all my time moaning about how terrible the build guides are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, then, well, I mean, my idea. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, my the the purpose of of me filming all of this is to hopefully provide people with a an expanded build guide, you know, so I can fall over all the troubles and all the problems, so that you won't have yeah. to. And that, yeah, course, that seems that seems to work. That's a bit of an angle. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It definitely is, and. Uh... Yeah, the the thing is, is I can imagine, you know, for something like Lego or, or somebody building like a, a toy, a kid's toy that the company I can imagine is uh, much larger and so they can afford to have somebody concentrating on something, uh, what is it, um, completely removed from the yeah. design process Absolutely, when usually yeah. something like uh, uh, a lot of synthesizer companies are a couple of people and they're very invested in the design and stuff when trying to actually make the uh, build documents uh, it's usually overlook a beginner's stance and I am I am as much um, guilty of that just what happens yeah I mean it's also it's inevitable because you're also too close to your product you know you things that seem completely obvious uh, to you yeah. could be completely mystifying to someone who's not really done it much before and of and that's course. yeah that's why this this sort of uh, conversation this kind of interaction is really helpful i think to people yeah it's cool what are you on are you on the 470 k's i uh, just finished those just doing the one m's one m one m that sounds like it should be a much bigger component yeah it actually is it's a Always meg, quite man. It's a one meg. One meg. And then, no. One M five. One M five. That's what that is. Okay, that must be what that is. Good. Oh, got one left. That must be that. It's a lot of soldering. I write build guides. Ah, actually, that's a very good point. And uh, Dave, who has just come on the conversation, Dave Curran of Time of Software. Oh, yeah. uh, I like I, I built the mini pet the other day. Oh, shit. And it was very straightforward. And he has, uh, I've got to be honest, like the uh, build, the, the, the quality of the uh, manual is very good. And that's it's on a breadboard, so uh, yeah, you can see that. In fact, this one I'm donating to a local uh, computer museum 
called the Micro Museum because uh, I think they will uh, find, like, they will use it after the coronavirus, of course. Oh, so yes. I'm go I've I built two of these. One for one for me, mm. one for them. If that's all right with you, Dave. <laughs> I think because they're more focused on the games and the computers and mine's more focused on the music, I think they could really do with it because they've got a couple of Commodore pets and they don't work. So it was yeah. just like, seemed like a good idea. There it is. There it is, you bugger. Yeah. Hey, so, what's that one? Uh, that's one M. a 1M5. One M now, I seem to have got a whole... It'd be 24K. I didn't have a... I didn't have one of those. Oh, uh, which that? one's a 24K? Let me have a look. That's R3. Have look at... So have you managed to... Have you lost that one? Do you have Do you have no, a 24K? No, I didn't, I didn't have it in my selection of stuff. Okay, well, I'll see if we can substitute that. 24K. What have we got? That's the track. Uh, do you have a 22K? What were those other ones I was using? They were 2.2, .2, weren't they? 2.2. 22k. Yeah, Let me have a little rummage. Or a 20k, or just anything around the vicinity. And um, you could, I think you might be all right. That That is in charge of the scaling for the, uh, for the tuning. Okay. And I think we might be able to get away with it. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. 2k2 that's not quite right 27 what about 27 is that a 27k did you say no just 27 ohms ah oh, that's annoying so there's no 27k i might be i'm only halfway through me hang on i put those down there oh good oh what was that falling out of there no 1k it's all right da -da. Uh, 22 ohms. Just uh, just say whatever Ks you've got that are near that. Even if it's an 18K, yeah, yeah. we maybe. Maybe. 56? <laughs> nah. Actually, uh, 56. Um, 56 divided by 2 is 26 and 27. Oh, my God, my math. 20, 23. <laughs> 23, go for 23. No, I mean... Have you got 20... No, <laughs> I mean half of what, 56. What? Oh no, 56 half... no, it's no, not. It's 28. 28. It's 28. What are we talking about? It? Yeah. All right, two meg. Somebody, somebody tell us what's going on. 22K, hang on. Hang on. Have you got 22K? 22K. Oh, wow. yeah. 22K. Yeah, you'll be fine with that. You'll be fine with that one. So uh, this one, uh, it's always good. So uh, uh, Robin, if you ever do things like this, maybe after you've built it, possibly... Yeah. Have a look because the schematics on the website and also have a look at the data sheet of the CEM3340. So this actual chip on the VCO is the same chip that is used in the Profit 5. In the, the Profit CEM. 5 we were talking about yeah, of course. Just before we came yeah, on we air. About early. The yeah. Profit 600, the Oberheim, uh, I think it's in the SH101, a whole load of them. But you can have a look at the data sheet if you search up CEM3340 data sheet. Look yeah. at the picture, be like, this makes no sense. But look at it for like an hour and it might make sense. <laughs> Trust me, it might start to all fall into place. Yeah, bit, totally. Bit I by mean, bit. That's absolutely what I had intended to do with this whole project is just uh, steamroll myself into it. Oh, look, I've got some soldering to do. Hang on, we've got the, uh, yeah. I've got some super, super duper precision resistors here, you know. Oh, did you go for 20 ticket? I'm going to try and build the same as you have, so... Yeah, 20. yeah, went for 22k. Yeah, cool. Oh, I've already put one in. Cool. Uh, no, so got, the precision is... I've yeah, got some very posh resistors. 10k ones. So what's what's that about? Yeah. So, uh, funnily enough... Uh, sorry, I'm waiting for my clock to finish. <laughs> it's just going off on one. Um, so the uh, precision resistors... Actually, after doing more tests, after building this, they don't have to be as precise as first thought. So basically what these precision oscillator uh, resistors do is they choose the division between uh, the oscillator switch. Okay. No, the octave switch. Octave the switch, octave. yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, 
It's a, it's a, it's a weird thing, but basically it acts as a voltage divider between ground and a certain voltage. Uh, well, actually four volts. So you have four 10K resistors. If you think about it, like ground is one side and four volts is the other side. The 10K resistors, because there's four of them, it actually divides it into um, steps between uh -huh. zero and four volts. And because there's overall, there's four, there's four 10K resistors, divide that by four, because there's four of them, that's 10K. So if you, if you, if you uh, use that, you're able to uh, divide the four volts by a voltage each because you divide it by four. So the first yes. voltage on the first 10K is one volt, and then gotcha. it goes to two volt, and three volt, and four volt. That's why I thought precision would be the best. Uh, oh, I'm pointing at the way to point them. So um, it just makes sure that it's definitely an octave. <laughs> that was a very convoluted way of yeah, yeah. describing it. So what you're it, saying but... is there's different quality levels or I guess tolerance levels of resistors, is that? Yeah, is that so it? you can get away. Uh, so actually, uh, it's not as important as a thought uh, as a thought with this so a precision resistor usually is within is it not point i think it's not point is it not point one percent or one percent uh precision resistors one second i should know this off the top of my head but i'm just having a bit of a brain lapse um precision resistor usually what is it oh my god oh, it's um Ooh. I'm questioning myself now, and it's gone. <laughs> Someone will tell us in the chat. I'm sure that that tends to be what my experience. One percent. There you go. Says Skull Drazer. What a precision one. Yeah. So and then a normal one. Um, you can get a precision type. So where, imagine if you're building resistors in a factory. Um, the uh, the build uh, the the testing is a lot more rigorous within precision oscillate uh, precision resistors. So a lot of them. A lot of the ones that are near but not quite near enough get chucked into the pile of the non-precision. Yeah. But if you're building the non-precision resistors, uh, there will be a chance that a lot of them are bang on anyway. So it just uh, the tolerances of production, basically. Yeah. So you're paying a little bit of a premium for that extra testing step. Gotcha. And within um, precision is usually important within uh, the tuning in modular synthesizers because people like things being in tune they do this is true you can anyway. also just make your own make your own resistors oh match your own right okay yeah you can match your own so basically if you get a bag of you know like 20 10k resistors you get a multimeter you yeah. measure them all and they as long as they're all of the resistors are exactly this well nearly near enough the same value as close as possible then you've got a matched set of resistors it doesn't need to be bang on 10k it could be like 9.7k and if they're all 9.7k it'll do the job and likewise in a, in a in a voltage divider it doesn't need to be a 10k resistor it could be a a 50k resistor but as long as they're all the same it doesn't matter gotcha I can solder now. Should I solder now? How are you doing? Yeah, go crazy. Do you solder? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be catching up in a sec. I've just been baffling and Matt, you know, talking about these precision things and then <laughs> haven't been uh, popping them in. Uh, right. Okay. Okie dokie. Time for the soldering. So yeah, I did this build along on Tuesday. It's the first time I've done soldering live on the telly. Yeah. And that, that was quite interesting. I mean, it took me half an hour to do the first anything because I, I was kind of like trying to talk myself out of it, I suppose. If I can distract what do you everybody mean, talk long yourself? enough. Well, because it was just yeah. a bit daunting to uh, actually start doing something and trying to make this kit work. And it was, well, it was good. I mean, it took three hours. What kit was that? It was a stasis leak, a frequency central effects module. Yeah. It was all right. It was good. I mean, it took a long time, and sadly, by the end, it didn't work. But it was. Uh, oh. it, it turned out to be because I hadn't soldered one of the pots in. 
I mean, I looked at it multiple times, but it was like sort of half past 11 by that time. And I was looking at this thing going, oh, I can't. It looks fine. It looks fine. But then in the morning, this is, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what's... Uh, in fact, I remember from... I can't remember. Uh, was it... Um, maybe it was a Music Thing modular uh, uh, manual. He uh, basically says, if you're tired, yeah, the best thing to do is just stop. <laughs> Because just you're gonna get frustrated, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's not gonna go right. And I've I've got one more thing to add to that. Uh, if you if you try and if you get right to the end of something that is a little bit hairy, you know, a little bit sketchy, and you're not sure whether it's gonna work, and you're tired, don't ever test it. Yeah, yeah. Always have in your mind like go to bed because if not and it doesn't work. You're either going to stay up for a load of other hours trying to fix it and likely not fix it and be frustrated going to bed. You know, you just need to give yourself that time. Totally, yeah. It's not, yeah. So whenever I build anything now that it, and it ends up getting really late at night, I just don't test it. I just go to bed. Which is always, I know, it's, it's you really want to... You really want it to work. It <laughs> I know, you really but, want it to go. But just the time, you know. It's no, it's what, good what advice. Happens. I'm doing another one tomorrow with the the Robo 3PT. It's um, a little, what's that? A Robo it's a like, 3PT. It's a little multifunction modulator, I suppose. Uh, it's really, it's very. Yeah. I mean, it's like kind of frequency central is very old school uh, module. Oh, it's with, frequency with central. Stuff. Uh, no, the first one was yeah, from the other day. The one on Friday is by Robo, who's very, very modern looking. It's very sleek. It's got this whole ring of LEDs behind the front panel and, and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be a, a, a very different kind of build, I think. But, that's cool. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. Is it surface mount? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it a kit? As in it came with the stuff? Yeah, yeah. I haven't looked at it in any detail yet. Oh dear, I'm, I'm always amazed out. by uh, kit builders and like um, kits are so difficult to put together. And I'm sure Dave, if he's still watching, can. I mean, like uh, just putting together a kits can be, I can imagine, very time-consuming, a little bit frustrating, and at times can take just as long potentially as actually uh, manufacturing the product. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's like you have to make sure that you have everything in there, find all the resistors and such, and uh, yeah, just make sure that everything is there. But yeah. testament to those, testament to the kit builders because they have, you know, they make it a lot easier for people who want to build and stuff because it's there. And you, I, I think you just, you, yeah, sit down and realize how much time these people have put into a kit to put yeah. it together and make sure everything's there. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. I have not approached this soldering in any kind of systematic nothing. I haven't either. I'm just scattering I, I, I've, bit there, bit to there. To be honest, for for second for ne for the next one you build, maybe do half of the resistors and then <laughs> and then solder. Yeah. Because it is a little bit like uh, trying to jump between the legs here. But it's all good. Ooh, ooh. Wait. How are we looking? Getting there. Oh, that's not one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to suck oh, that did out you later. Onto a... Oh, that's the worst. Ah. Oh. It's just um yeah that's 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 a very frustrating part of uh, building circuits and uh, you'll be pleased to know it does get less <laughs> as time goes on. Oh, the concentration! Yeah, yeah. You need a half-time person to do to do the talks. You need to get like a. Yeah, like a robot. Run through, uh, run through reruns of uh, Happy Days. <laughs> well, when I uh, when I make videos 
on these sorts of uh, builds I always do a time lapse for the doing the resistors and stick on something nice in the background you know turn it into a bit of a meditative piece it's of good course. but then that's all in post you see I don't have the time to sit around making up tunes for people <laughs> oh. oh god yeah that's a it's a, it's a that is life oops oh don't do that I just stuck a soldered a leg to another leg Get out of it. Come on. Oh, no. Put it together. Just got a cold joint. I usually find best practice when you're um I, I when you look when you're soldering and you you snip the legs off, always give a once over and look at the uh joint and if it looks wrong always uh try and re-wet it there and then instead yeah. of leaving it till later because you'll always forget you will yeah so when it's, you bend uh, the legs slipping. yeah sorry, sorry when carry you, on. so when you bend the legs on the back because i've bent all mine quite flat which means then when you solder it the snipping is kind of a little bit of an angle do you generally bend legs flat or do you bend them you know i'm just looking for looking for tips man Oh, what, so what do you mean? Say, say that again. So when you're bending legs underneath a PCB, yeah, um, you know, to hold oh, the no, resistors in. Oh, no, I don't bend them flat. I just bend them my... about... Oh, so you might end up about... a bit flat, you see. <laughs> it's about... Oh, yeah, that's quite extreme. Like, usually I go for... Imagine if uh, they're straight... If they're straight up in the... I usually go for about a 10 degree. Okay. 15 degrees. So see, it's like a, a hardly, good... hardly anything. Yeah, that's a good tip so, actually because I'm just starting enough to get these to a keep bit funny. Them in. Yeah, because you know yeah. I've I've soldered them already and it's just that it speeds it up a lot. It does, yeah. It's, oh, look, there's one I haven't done. Oh, there's Ooh. a couple. Yeah, well, you certainly got the edge on the. You got the young man's speed. That's what it is. <laughs> it's my a, it's old eyes like, um, and my shaky hands. Okay, it's, quite, it's quite all right. I mean, like uh, I've had to be honest. I've sped up a lot when I built that. Uh, thousand oscillator mega drone i had to sit down and try and realize that uh, try and uh, hone a technique i never really had a technique before and um i had to really uh get something together or i'd just be sat there for years so i would have expected you to have minions by now oh uh, it just um to be honest it's um uh, it's a lot of a uh, lot of thinking about what you need what needs to be done and such and i, I, I to be honest with my with my machines i, I much prefer I'm a, I'm a quite a solitary beast that's right. that's the bit easiest way of saying it yeah um i just feel uh i like i like it that i've built the whole thing i've gone yeah. through the rigors of just actually sitting down and also the other point is like you know if somebody wanted to sit down and make a thousand oscillator mega drone in their in their shed they they can it's it's possible yeah it's just you know so yeah there's a lot of uh there's a, a very very large one that i'm planning i'm still trying to source all the parts i can't really give away the goat yet because it's going to be another few months of sourcing the parts but uh it might be the end of me <laughs> <laughs> well you know, be too much you don't take on small things do you uh no no yeah, I'm just gonna run to the toilet, so All I'll right. just uh, leave you to do your do your snippy snippies. Well, this is not my finest soldering, I have to say. Oh, there's another one. I haven't done. I 
Although I have got to the point where I can pick up and put down my soldering iron without looking at it. In the zone, I think they call that. <laughs> oh! I was whistling the whole way. Snippy, snippy, magic-y, doody, doody. Intermission. I've got oh. a PCB coming from Fab this week that is based off of Sam's simple 3330, 3340 circuit. That's cool, Greg. Be interesting to see how it goes. No disrespect to Sam, but with ca Ooh. Castletronic schematic with a 7905 regulator is a better design. Yeah, most definitely. That's fair enough. That's fair, but it works. <laughs> I, I did. I have checked out the Cassitronics one, the 7905. I'm trying to. Oh, with the is it an inverted using an inverted 7905 to regulate? I'm gonna have a look at that schematic really quick, just to see what the difference is. Cassitronic 3340 BTO schematic. Oh, this is a different one. Never seen this one before. Castletron. Oh, that was some resistors. That was. It's very small. Yeah, did you get it, get it sorted? Yeah, I think so. <sighs> that looks all right. Nothing's falling out, as far as I can tell. I don't see a 7905 on the Cassotronic. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong schematic. Oh, anyway. Oh, is it a... Uh... I'm trying to actually find this. Anyway, we're on the um, we're on the capacitors now, aren't we? Could be, could be. Let's find a bag of stuff. <clears throat> What's that? That's an empty bag. Don't like the look of that. That's some resistors. Get those out of the way. LEDs. Some kind of spiky thing blue thing pots i had to go around the world for those b100ks you know how to get them from mouser in the end on the well, oh the b the b100k oh, but... pots were they not available in um no funk didn't have any sadly why what, what were they out of stock yeah. yeah oh that's really annoying i've just noticed i've just looked at your pots they might, uh, they'll be fine, but they haven't got the threads on them. Oh. They're the ones about oh, the Oh, you're right. Yeah, them. yeah. That's a bummer. Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, well. I've got some here, but I can send you them. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> you want I'll me get... to send you them? No, no, no. I'll get the, I'll pick up the right ones, I'm sure, at some point. Oh, I mean, that's we'll... a bummer. Does that mean the knobs yeah. aren't going to fit? I mean, the, yeah, the, yeah, the knobs. Yeah, they're not the metal shaft. They're the ones yeah, about no, the threads. Right. That's a you're shame. Right. Uh, oh, well, well, it's it, this happens. We're getting over the learning curve. Yeah, too There'll right. Be, you'll be able to just whack together your own own things quick. <laughs> oh, there they are. I knew I had them somewhere. I couldn't find my knobs. Whacking together me knobs in me jack sockets. They're Frank, nice. Francis. I, I like oh, which him. one's that? Oh, yeah, those. You've gone for those knobs. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think um, you'll have to probably wait to pop in some of those. I think you'd be better off. Oh, they will work those knobs, but those pots. But I think you'll be better having the ones that mount to the panel because it'll be wriggling around. It will just be a bit rubbish. <laughs> yeah, of I course think... that makes complete sense. They haven't got nuts on. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Damn. Anyway, meanwhile, capacitors. Would you want the the strange, weird paddy things? Oh, I've got some cool. paddy ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what for ones the one, are those? one nanofarads. One and, nanofarad. And then I got confused with a hundred nanofarads and the 0 0.1 microfarad. They're fine. That, or whether they're the same thing, I think they are. Yeah, they're they're just in a different package. Yeah. I can't remember when I was talking further. Where is it? But that was one of those things when you're trying to to find them. If there's a if the plate if the link what didn't have them in stock, which happened from time to time, trying to yes. find them somewhere else, and and be certain that it's the same product was 
that was quite difficult i found yeah but it just um it'll come with time knowing it it's just a lot of these uh, like mm. it's a pa it's a superpower and you can you will, yeah. you will get that superpower because it's like it means that you can go onto these uh websites to just sell circuit boards and just bash them together in a in an afternoon yeah <laughs> See, that doesn't go on there very well <laughs> poor little thing it's sitting there all you know all sticking up e by itself thinking oh, oh, i should be, I should be lower down <laughs> what's that we got c c6 could be c6 no yeah one nanofarad yep yep And then a bunch of these globby ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. C one, C two, three and five. C one. I'm just trying to find this Cassitronic schematic. Oh there it is. Found it. So, seven, eight, nine, nine, five. Uh, Infinite Machinery, um, who was on the chat earlier, is from Cassatronics or uh, yeah. Cassatronics. Is he on it? I haven't seen him recently. Jim, are you there? He'll know. Oh, I see. They're using it to. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's it's instead of a unipolar app, are they making it bipolar? Is it? Oh no, that's a. I'm trying to. I, I'm trying to look sideways at the schematic, but what? Oh, so where's the ceramic <laughs> stuff? Um. Oh, you, you sell the kits, Jim. Yeah, that's right. You're not. Uh, you're not the man him necessarily. Oh, good. I was just trying to look at the schematic, figure out what they. I haven't seen it. The, the, the amazing thing is, like, there are many ways to skin a cat. That's that's the thing. Yeah, that's that's a saying that probably doesn't translate very well. <laughs> like in different languages, I can imagine there's many ways to skin a cat. So, yeah. Also, oh, what are you looking for? Sorry. Who me? I'm looking for C two. C two is next to the TLO seventy four. It's just yes. above it. God damn it. 74. You just uh, go up. Go up. upwards. Upwards or downwards? Uh, yeah, there, 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 there. You're right next to it. Oh, it's it next is. To it. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> it's got the label at the top. That's, That's all right. Fooled me. Fooled me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get this down. Um, hello, Infinite Machinery. Hello. Um, and uh, TH Worth, Sam, did you get into electronics through music or into music through synths? I got into uh, a lot electronics through music, but uh, I got into uh, electronic. Oh, yeah. And I got into music. I didn't know what a synth was most, uh, most of my music learning time. I thought they were, I didn't know what they were. I thought they were electric keyboards, got to be honest. Until I found them and then it was amazing. <laughs> oh, there's more 100. How many 100 nanofarads? Eight. Eight of them? Yeah. Oh. I've only put four in. I thought I was, uh, thought it was done. All of the couple of so what was your first synth? Uh, Korg MS-10. Fair enough. So, Solid. Yeah, what about yours? Yeah. Uh, DX-100. Oh. Funky. Yeah. But the funky. And when was, was that? It was my dad's really, I suppose. About 
I don't know, 1984, <laughs> 85, whenever it was it came yeah. out. He also had a Technics um, KN200, just a, like a home keyboard style thing, which had this fantastic uh, bra sound that when you put on the chorus was just a, a fabulous synth pad. And that's what I'd use oh, all cool. the time. Do you still do... have one of those? No. Ah. Let them go a long time ago. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, did, I got a MS10. I think I bought it in 2013. That was the first time I ever played on a synthesizer. I was just like, oh, this is amazing. Oh, wow. It just captured my imagination uh, yeah. completely and full. Like uh, before that, I knew of uh, like plugins on Logic, for instance. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was, I loved, my favorite one was a. Uh, analog mono which i think was even a garage band plugin it was just because i i loved the fact that it was simple like the problem i have with plugins is that all the presets they always have so many bloody effects on it and stuff yeah it's like bypass bypass all these internal effects and stuff and i think it's always a bit overkill personally and it always sounds like a preset so it's like trying to bring it down to the simplest form and then getting a real world version of an analog mono it just, uh, I don't know, there's, it's a very hard way of d describing what is the differences, but it just mm. sounded so much more in your face. Yeah, absolutely. It was very strange, the first experience of that. First synth was a Korg MS-10 franc, uh, sold in the 1980s for £75. <gasps> oh. To be honest, I bought my first one for about £100. It was broken, so... They're not worth that anymore, are they? They go going up, really. I think. Yeah. But there's times. I mean, I had a. I bought a DX7 for fifty quid at about. Yeah. In about ninety seven, ninety eight, I think it was. But I had no. Well, I mean, I was living in a bed sit. You know, I had nowhere. I had nowhere to put it. It was so heavy. You couldn't drag it anywhere. So I just had to to get rid of it again. You know, it's that. It's that problem of. Yeah. Uh, trying to live a little bit light. You just end up with a guitar. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, going to yeah. have to do you. That is the one. I like, uh, in, I think it was in about, I think it was in 2013. I bought, I sold, like, I bought a Roland Juno 6, yeah. yeah. I think it was £300. And I, I, came, I came a bit short on money and I needed to sell it quite quick. And nobody was buying it. I put it up for £300 again on Gumtree. Nobody bought it. 2013, £300. Pounds. Wow. I ended up selling it for about £180 pounds <laughs> for a Juno 6. Oh, God. And that was only, what, like seven years ago? Yeah. Now they're up for, um, now they've been completely extorted. I think oh, the guy funny. was, oh, I was so sad that I had to sell that. I had to buy some more noodles. Yeah, yeah, needs must. <laughs> oh, Oh, you've uh, made a mistake. You sold the sucking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that was that hole I filled by accident. Ah, I see. Jubbly, jubbly. Oh, we are in a golden age of synthesizers at the moment. It's no uh, yeah. Uh, it is, um, it's definitely... Uh, I mean, there's so many now as well. Like this last five years, there's been an explosion of manufacturing of synthesizers as well. Yeah. As the interest. It's quite, quite crazy. And I'm trying to liken it to another instrument kind of thing, but I'm not sure. Was it, is it like the guitar pedals in the 10 years ago or so? Yeah, I mean, I, sure. I guess it sort of goes in waves. I mean, you had the the guitar scene that came to come back in the 90s, where you had that divergence of dance music and indie music going on. Uh, yeah. You know, which created a, a whole new waves of different sorts of rock music. So guitars are on the rise again. But they never seem to go away, that's the thing. And, and so they shouldn't. But uh, synthesizers yeah. had a much more of a roller coaster ride with it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it's because they're not as tangible uh for for somebody looking at them they're not as tangible performance devices as guitars mm. for instance like if you look at a guitarist and you're not an instrument musician you're like oh yeah he's playing a guitar yes you know if you look at somebody playing a synth it's like what <laughs> <laughs> so in the popular in popular like uh you know popular culture it's a it's a very strange 
the one because it's just not as obvious. Like, uh, for instance, in the 80s, it was, you know, quite obvious what it was because there was a bunch of people look at, looking like scientists in music yes. videos. It was like, oh, yeah, the scientist. Yeah, the That's scientists. Right. Making Standing music. around looking glum. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's. I think, uh, yeah, guitars definitely have an easier job at that because, you know, they just dance around with your bloody guitar and you can <laughs> they can see your hands. It's sort of, there's a direct comparison between the sound it makes and the hand movements. Yes. So people can understand. And I think that's why it's so, you know, drums so you as been, well. Have you, been tempted by, have you been tempted by a keytar? Oh, uh, a keytar. I've, I've been of it. Uh, I've been trying to find one of those Moog, is it a Liberator? Oh, wow, Moog, yeah. Moog Liberators. Yeah. But they just are, uh, they're going up as well, which is annoying. But recent, I, I, uh, last year I bought a um, a broken, what is it? Oh my God, a D Roland, a D Roland GR, ah! can't remember the name of it, GR500 or something. Do you know those? <laughs> no, not off the top of my head. Uh, it's like the one that looks like a Les Paul. It's like wooden with loads of knobs on it. Oh, wow. It's... um. But it's it's not a very good synth. But it's quite a cool machine, regardless. David Bowie's guitarist Roland GR fifty. Is it a fifty? I was playing it earlier. Nope. Don't know why. Somebody might say, "What is the one I'm thinking of?" It's a wooden, and I got one, and it's just like it's left my brain. <laughs> Maybe it's yeah. a GR one hundred. But you do a pretty good job of performing with synths because I think it I think it is difficult. I mean, like I say, doing some Eurorack um, stuff live, it, you just end up being pulled in. I mean, we saw Stroma that time at Toman, yeah? And yeah. I thought they were flipping excellent. I'd never quite seen yeah. synths done in such a way. And they weren't even facing us. They weren't even facing the crowd. And they were still dynamic no. uh, and awesome. And uh, I was pretty blown away by that. But, you know, you do a similar thing, I think. I mean, you did a... There's a song on your EP which you did live, I saw on Facebook. You did a live version of it. Um, oh, it's just um, just music? Yeah. Uh, no, you sang as well. Pretty oh. sure you sang as well. You did, like, a live performance yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. that was just just brilliant. I mean, the the fact that GR you can... GR500, that's the one. You can play okay. it and perform well. it, you know... Um, it's it's um yeah the one well, here I think a, is is phenomenal, phenomenal. Thanks. Well, there's this um there's a video by Michael Forrester. Michael Forrest. I'm trying to think. There's a he talks about uh, the conundrum with modular synthesizers and how uh, different examples of how it's overcome in the performance thing because it's the same as laptop performance yeah. sometimes. So yeah, for instance, yeah. laptop performance, you, you know, it looks like sometimes you might be doing an Excel spreadsheet on, I don't know, <laughs> yes. uh, just the parking fines in East Hampshire. I don't know. Like, um, so, yeah, it's just uh, looking at the different ideas of, yeah, just, I, it's weird, isn't it? It is, it is. But the other thing that Stromer was doing was they were, this is the other conundrum, is like they were facing away so they can see, you can see their hands doing the thing. Yes. But then at the same time, you can't see their face. You're just looking at yeah. their wriggly legs, you know, doing the dance, yeah, which is all good. So it's like trying to find the, a fine line between the yeah. all. Yeah, because so again, think, if, like, you, if you've got a, awesome. if you've got like a suitcase rack um, of modular, do you stand... <laughs> Uh, yeah, do you face that to the crowd so they can see that but then you've got your back to them or do you put yeah. the back of the modular to them so they can see you but then they can't see anything you do and they'll just go and piss off and have a beer it's like uh, may I have a cop top down camera maybe I, I angle it so it's upside down and I'm sort of leaning over it so they can both see it yeah. upside down and I'm playing with it or maybe you have one that's that's circular somehow that slowly rotates <laughs> a rotating one that could be quite interesting i think yeah like the, the, the facing i don't know I, i'm a fan of the stroma setup but I, that's what i do as well is facing away with the hands on yeah. the thing but also the other thing that stroma did <clears throat> was they had that dope for module that was the rgb dope for module 
didn't they? They had oh, the yeah, flashing lights. lights. Yeah, that's right. So, so that's a dark. That's a module that Dofa bought out. I can't remember. Does anybody know what the name of that Dofa module is? And that one, it basically you plug in any cheap, crappy LED strip yeah. into this Dofa module, and it will. You can send control voltages into the uh, red, the green, and the blue. So that's you can right. make your own light show. That's right. Oh, now, what's that I, one? Oh, I got... splashed out on some ferret beads, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's just the yeah. kind of guy I am. You could go funky, or you could just <laughs> use uh, the Lego resistor. It's up to you. <laughs> uh, I but kind of put, cool. the, yeah. I put the electrolytics in, and then I suddenly thought, but they're a bit tall. I wondered whether I should put other things oh, in first. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, maybe. maybe. Maybe, like the, the IC sockets and stuff. IC might sockets. Be, uh, yes, that's why I've already sold it. No, I haven't soldered them in yet, so maybe I'll put these ferret beads in first because they're nice and low. So I might take those electrolytics out for the moment. See, I haven't bent the legs as much. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. That means they come out easier. Yeah. There's the other one. Don't for A197-3. I wonder what the A197-1 is. <laughs> Their naming convention is rubbish. Uh, it just it's like me it's nuts. like B, it's like BMW as well though. Like uh, <laughs> you know, like cars, like cars. Label, yeah. I just cannot remember any number of BMW. Like like for instance, I don't know Volkswagen. You you can name a Volkswagen that drives past because it's got a funny name. It's like, yes. or you can name like a any British Leyland car or anything because they've just got ridiculous <laughs> names. British Leyland. It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of ones of ridiculous names. That just yeah, encompasses yeah. a lot from like I don't know. Like I'm trying to think of a British Leyland car. It's just like well, yeah, Austin Princess, uh, Mini Clubman. Uh, <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. So what size? Uh, what pins? How many pin ICs do we need? Because like I ordered one, right, and they sent me two rows of <laughs> of twenty. Is that rapid? Yeah, Is that rapid. Yeah, you're yeah. amazed about how cheap they are as well. Like, you were expecting that to just be one. Yeah, well, I see. Like I ordered, so I ordered two. It says quantity two because um, I got doing two oscillators, uh, and of course, I got forty. That's it. Makes sense. This is the mistakes that you make, but it then is. six it months is. down the line, you've saved yourself so much money building your own quickly and stuff from making manufactured assembled products, which yes. is still for good some people, and and for some aspects, it's always good to have buy it straight off the bat. But sometimes you just. Uh, to get there's the helicopters again there's a over and i just need the one i think on this on this fella i need the one and 14. The other one's over here. pt guitars gr500 is the very first roland guitar synthesizer it's really good and i've done a couple of videos on it and i, I love i love it i'll never get rid of it until i run out of money <laughs> Because <laughs> I might come skint sometime. You just never know. You never know. So that's the thing. Like having the Simps is like a little bit of a savings account in a way. <laughs> that's true. At least that's one way to explain them. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I just uh, whenever any money, I, whenever any like I get paid for a month or something, it just all goes on components or Simps or beans on toast. <laughs> Oh, this is a big you've one. Got, that must be the Arduino oh, filler. Yeah, uh, yeah that good. one's... And you've managed to buy a whole load of those as well. That's awesome. It looks like they're one piece. No, no, that's all right. No, they break... Yeah. All BMWs can be called number two. <laughs> <laughs> For sale near me. Vintage, very good condition. Roland GR808 guitar with GR300 synth. Three thousand nine hundred dollars. That's mad. Cool. That's a lot of money. Ah, just that. Uh, a synths are a lot of money, aren't they? They can be. They can, they be. can be. Very expensive. Yeah. But I mean, how I've much been... is the poly? Carry on. The what? The poly. How brute? much is the poly brute? I haven't looked. Two and a half, I think. Something like that. Two two, maybe two two fifty. That's like three times as much as my car. <laughs> I know, I know. So I've been thinking a lot about um, poly synths lately and thinking, you know, I, so I don't have anything. I've got a couple of little synths, like an MS-101 and a, the Microfreak. 
um, and the rest is modular. And I've been thinking, yeah. you know, a, a big synth would be a really nice thing to have. Uh, but then you go start going down cool. that road. Yeah, there's the there's that. Of course, I mean, there's the Moog One. Of course, is the one that jumps up straight away. But oh yeah, it's just one, yeah. silly money. I don't know. They're nearly they're nearly at the vintage prices. Yeah, and like I don't like uh, being um doing uh like uh, I try to buy well for polyphonic synths. I've only got two at the minute, and one of them's broken. It was a Juno One Hundred Six <laughs> that. I need to fix the voice board on. It's not even the voice cards, it's the voice board. But, um, like, uh, touring with them is a bit of a nightmare, and touring with a new one would be good, but then you've got to think about insurance on something that expensive. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. so much more money than, like, like the rest of the equipment. It's a lot of money, but I, there's a lot of stuff in there, and it's amazing. It's. A, I think it would definitely be a good studio device, or if you're a big band to tour with something like that but it's a, it's a hefty chunk yeah it totally is no, but at I'm the not... same time that isn't the isn't the matrix brute that's about that was about 1400 pounds was it yeah yeah it wasn't a, a wasn't a cheap one yeah i okay. guess like it's not that bad yeah Oh, what are you putting on now? <laughs> I've got, I've got lost. I've just uh, yeah. I, I'm trying to do IC holders, so um, that's always a bit tricky. In the, I mean, I've also got those capacitors that not the electrolytic, but the the other ones are slightly in the way. So I've got it raised up on a nice uh, bit of nice bit of foam. Oh, a quick, a good... quick note, uh, Robin, before yes. you put that in. No, is that, have late. you ever done? Have you ever bent the legs in? What of IC holders? Yeah, look, look, what's this? What's this? Have a look. Turn around. Turn around. Hang look on. at this really quick. <laughs> so I've got an IC socket. IC. Yeah. Socket. You plop it, plop it in. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just get your finger. You just, you'd go like that, and you go like that. You bend them inwards, and then you turn it upside down, and it just stays the same. Bend them into the middle. Yeah, bend them into the middle a bit. Just a couple of them. Just a couple of them and they just stay in and then you don't need to use a polystyrene thing. That could change my life. Yeah, look. You can knock it anywhere, it doesn't do anything. So as long as you've you as long as you've got Yeah, those ones. Those ones are the bendy ones. You can you, you can bend those. Nice. So I managed so just to try it with that... that one you've got in. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's all right, yeah. I managed to tack the other one in. Just about. I'm getting. See, I'm getting good at balancing on bits of old sponge and <laughs> stuff. Yeah, and crap. Yeah. So just it, it's, oh, a it's a little bit hurty on the it's fingers. It's a little spiky on my fingers, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. All you can look, do is look, that like... works. That bloody yeah, works. Yeah. That does. Yeah, yeah, but the yeah. other alternative is to use uh, your finger holding it on and then using a flat point screwdriver. Yeah. And just squishing them down with a flat point. But I don't mind the. I don't mind the pain. I don't mind putting in a little bit of. <laughs> See, yeah. Got to put in right. the pain. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So I don't need to put it on me bit of foam anymore. Yeah, exactly. Do... Ah, Dave's got a very good point. But What's that? Hopefully this doesn't happen. I can imagine the more <laughs> icy... I don't know. It's fine for sockets, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. Because you don't... Uh, Dave says if you... It makes them a nightmare to desolder. However, I can't imagine... Uh, sockets... Uh, would you wouldn't desolder them as often as a chip? For instance, funnily enough, Dave, uh, the mini pet that I, uh, you know, the mini pet inside the Commodore, the motherboard that I built in the Commodore 64, I had to desolder the binary counter in that one to make the circuit bend possible. All went well, and that was testament to you not bending the legs over for the actual socket because he. Um, didn't use sockets, soldered them straight on. Perfectly fine practice. But um, yeah, I accidentally broke a trace underneath it uh, when I was doing it, uh, going from, I can't remember, to the uh, video output. Took me a while to figure out, and I ended up having to make a put a wire from where I found it. I just didn't realize I accidentally damaged a, damaged a trace when I was um, a wire on the circuit board. But d fixed it, thank fudge. Blue tack yeah. gum does taste good. Oh, somebody's saying blue tack as well is a good one. Yeah, yeah. In fact, people are forever getting me to. For... Yeah. Sorry. So people are forever telling me to use masking tape. 
Oh, mask and, and tape, like, yeah, mask and tape. It, it always comes down to what do I have to hand? Yeah. And yeah, so just making the best of it. Yeah, definitely. Mask and Vi- tape is a good one. Yeah, vices is the other thing people go on about. I mean, it's all good advice, don't get me wrong. I'm appreciative of everybody's good advice. It's just that huh. I, I just can't always be faffed. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I totally understand. That's why, yeah, just trying to think of the dirty alternatives, the quick and dirty yes. ones. Yes, yeah. Because a, a vice, what, like a PCB vice? Yeah, yeah. Because you often have these instructions saying, you know, hold the component on with, on the left side, and then solder on the right side. So, well, well, how do I do that? I need three hands in order to hold the solder and the soldering iron, and to hold it in place. Yeah. But that's because they're talking about having advice. It makes all the difference. Somebody else uh, is holding it. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Advice. Ooh. I don't think I have advice. I, 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 advice for circuit boards i probably yeah. should it might change my life change my i life. know indeed <laughs> i mean that's the thing i'm so resistant to uh you know good advice that people give give me i'm forever going oh i don't know i just like the way i do it and then eventually i get around to trying it like getting a decent soldier iron and it just like oh well that's that's it that's that's what, what, what soldier have you got a, i, I could got see a, a hacko is that hacko, a hacko? Yeah. yeah 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 but yeah, yeah before then i was using a, a 10 quid one from argos you know yeah and that was fine yeah, that was it worked a- uh, How this much was is a, the hacko? A hundred quid or something, I think it was. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. But I, I figured, had a hacko for a while. I figured if I was going to do a whole load of... Well, with the Deckard's Dream again, it's like, if I'm going to sit here spending four weeks solidly soldering, I probably better get something that's going to work. Yeah, you may... Yeah. Oh, hello, Jewel Tracks. How's it going? I hope all is good, actually. How do you organise your components, big plastic shelves with bins? Well, uh, I think uh, Robin was talking about earlier that he may have big blue plastic shelves, but they may be a little chaotic. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not full of anything useful. Like, for instance, there's a, I've got in here, that's an oil, oil disc for a, um, a Mathos uh, oil projector. There you go. Uh, why have there's, you got... What, what, what's a an oil projector? Oil projector. Uh, it's one of those things that's that projects through like an oil plate can you see that, Bring that oh up. yeah Mathmos. I, see. I was well into oh, well, cool. i've always been well into lava lamps it's a bit of a thing yeah so uh yeah those are nice got some of those oh, that's cool <laughs> got lots of plastic that bags cool. at the moment yeah yeah I get the kids to hold the board. They have tiny hands and they always do what they're told. Nice. Or else Santa won't come at Xmas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, the IC holder for the uh, Duino, does that have to go any particular way around? Um, uh, as long as you really have... Matter? You see there's an, there's an arrow pointing with the USB pointing it outwards. Okay. So it doesn't really matter. Doesn't and really it matter. looks like... Have you got the right leg size? I don't know. I don't know. Is that one too? Is that oh, one too big? Oh, that's one too many. Yeah, so it's fine. Well, all you have to do is just bend the last two inwards, and just remember that you've bent the last two inwards. You see what I mean? So two of them I won't be using, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah. So just okay. uh, there's another way of using a quick way of removing them. If you have a flat point screwdriver, uh, I'll just um, if you look at this, have a look at the camera. Oh yeah, have a quick look at the cam. So a, a, a quick way of removing them for the legs. So if you've got more legs than you need on this, just use a flat point screwdriver and push it. Oh, I bent it instead of pushed it. Oh, oh. so ah, oh, doesn't even work. Don't listen to me. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I get the. Idea. Oh, it works with my mouth, but the actual the actual points fall out. They yeah. they fall out, but just snip the legs off that you don't need and maybe use something to signify that maybe they're not connected because annoyingly and this is the thing like there isn't a (laughs) a very easy to find um size of usb socket uh ic sockets for uh, the arduino nano it's a little bit annoying so would you have the overhang towards the edge of the board or in the middle of the board 
You may you choose. Oh, I've just bent those. Oh dear. I I, do, I always do them different, and then every time I wire it up wrong, and I was like, why isn't the Arduino working? <laughs> so you know, it's just you can do it either way. Okay, gotcha. And in fact, your screen print on it allows you to do it either way because it's big enough <laughs> to accommodate yeah. it in either direction. Oh, well, that's yeah, it to go um, in like that. I'll go with that. Go if with anybody that. has a link for some that are actually the right size, please put in the comments now. Or push the contacts back through. Yeah, yeah, you can push them through. Glob some solder over the two unused pins so it can't be inserted. There's the one from Skull Drazer says, oh, yeah. glob some... Globs, I can it. do. I can do globs. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, yeah. Whilst you're doing that, so something random turn up today. And uh, it was uh, the funny thing is, it was actually posted before lockdown and it suddenly decided to show itself today. It's um, a Polaroid camera that is for an oscilloscope. Rolled its no fast. It actually fits on the front of an oscilloscope. That's nuts. It's, it's, it's madness. But you're, you're doing a lot of soldering, but it's just that. It's from a fella called Spacepot, spacepot.org. Pretty mad. Look at that there. Ooh. Anyway, I usually use those single rows that you can adjust to whatever length you need. It's fair enough. Oh, kind I of had 3D my 3D print some. Yeah, I had. Oh, fair enough. I had my first experience of cutting headers to size with the Stasis Leak build on uh, on the other night, and that was fun. Right. Although I did it completely wrong and ruined. You know, split pins in the wrong places, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, always one more than you want. Yeah. Because T take it a pin out. Snaps. That's what somebody said. Yeah, exactly. That's what I discovered. It always breaks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, so your man saying stick a blob of solder in that end. That's not going to interfere with. I don't know. I, I've never, I've not done it before, but yeah. Oh, that was oh, quick. Yeah. That was good. Do that. Do that. Sorted. Good. That's oh, that's that lot. What else is going to be? What do I need now? Yeah, what well, else is tall? this is the thing. Like uh, because look. oh yeah, you've got plenty more to do before you have to stop to get the right potentiometers. And <laughs> <laughs> you might want to get you might oh, want to get more than four. If you find the right potential, wait for Funk to come back and do a stock take. I think they're finishing their stock. They're coming back on yeah, stock yeah. tomorrow, are they? That, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. So that might be the best time to check it out. But, I mean, Mouser was like two days. It was just amazing. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I, I think they might have a a warehouse in England, uh, surely. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. I like what you did with the GMS. Oh, so do you plan on doing some future collabs with the Eurorack companies? I like what you did with the safety valve. Funnily enough, dual tracks like... um. Uh, Glasgow makes some noise uh, with the safety valve. He contacted me and then we chatted about it. Like uh, I, I've never. I just, usually, if there's the opportunity arises, I, I give it some. You know, I, I try 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 it out. So, you know, if there's any Eurorack companies that want to try some things, but for me personally, making Eurorack modules are just like, I just they're so small, they're so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Because a lot of that's what a lot of questions is, but I just you know, I just want to make my own format, and yeah, it's yeah. probably shooting myself in the foot, but whatever. <laughs> no, it's good. So uh, B one hundred Ks, yeah. T eighteen shaft, alpha vertical, nine millimeter. Does that mean anything? Are um, there different types? Do I want? Are you looking on the internet? I'm looking at on um, Funk's site. You've got a choice of these alpha nine millimeter pots. What I was this is the thing. This is why I uh, linked their potentiometer potentiometers yeah. on. But it's fine. I'll find it now and I'll find the name of a potentiometer. Oh, they're back online. Yeah. Oh. They seem to be online. So you want 
No, you don't want the T18 because uh, the T18, you can get away with them, but they're usually, the T18 means that there's 18, I think it means there's eight, 18 splines around the top and they're usually for push knobs, push gotcha. down knobs. You yes. want the uh, ones that are round shafted, vertical, but Smooth. not long. So yeah, vertical, sm- alpha nine millimeter pots, vertical. vertical. Not. Okay. And then, oh, they've got loads in stock unless they, oh no. No, they're out, they're still out. <laughs> the 10 and the 100 Ks. Oh, yeah. man, I'm just gonna have to start stocking them because they're always out of stock everywhere. Well, I'm I'm wise to it a bit more now, so I'll know what to look for on uh, on Mouser when I go looking. I'll find some on Mouser. If anybody has a link for Robin for the right potentiometers, if not, then a good place to look is the forum. But you never know; there might be a a, a, a link that turns up. Yup. So where's this thing go? What is this thing I'm looking at? It's uh. Oh, I don't know what you're looking at. Power. I can't see what that one is. Oh. Oh, that. Oh, it's a, a voltage regulator. That That's one just word. regulates the voltage for. I think um because um that one, funnily enough, you probably don't need it because you've got an expensive Arduino. But uh, with the cheap Arduinos. Uh, usually it's a rule of thumb to never trust the voltage regulators that are on the Arduinos because they just go up in smoke. Like yeah. uh, if you've uh, like a number of times, especially in the uh, Furby organ build, would, it had about a hundred Arduino nanos in it. The amount of them that broke uh, smoked up. So uh, you'll see it at the bottom. It's at the bottom of the circuit board. It's flat. Uh, it says uh, next to the smiley face at the bottom. There's this L seven eight oh five. Is that it? Yeah, so you yeah you do it that way around. That's the right way around. So the little yeah, that's the orientation. Ah. It sticks up like that. I was so it's quite a tall one. So you, yeah, yeah. I was imagining it would fold down and I'd screw it down or something. But no, okay. I'll wait on that yeah. one for a bit. I've Sticky got out. a I got a four oh four oh something a U four three legged something or other. I had to get off eBay. I seem to remember the U four the four oh four oh. A Z four point one something or other. Ah, uh, yeah. This is the uh, basically this is another voltage regulator, but this regulates the voltage to make sure that the uh, knob for the octave, the octave switch, is exactly in tune. It basically acts as like. And the other thing about the um, the circuit design for this is the fine tune knob is exactly an octave, so. Right. If you twist the fine tune knob down to zero, it's like uh, G, and if you twist it up to maximum ten, it's G again. So bang in the middle of the knob is C, so it's always in tune, and it just makes it more musical. And that that little uh, precision shunt regulator makes it possible. Nice. So that's pots. Capacitors, just getting myself in a muddle. Got rid of that, seeing what's left. What was that? Oh, yeah, that was more capacitors. Okay, so that's a chip, 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 LEDs. Uh, then onto these trimmers. Yes, yeah, so I got ah, the me, trimmers. Yeah, I'll put my electrolytics back in again. Long leg positive. The oh, great yeah. thing is, this is one of the more complicated. Uh, modules after this i think you'll be on the home straight like the the filter's pretty simple stuff like that and i cool. just read something by greg hansen in the comments says waited for months for a set of 100 100 k pots and when it finally got delivered my mail was stolen oh sucks that's awful got the clock going again What is it? Good lord, it's 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's going 10. Has anybody tried the no-name pots from AliExpress? I don't know. Please send a link, Skulldrazer. I'd love to see what you're talking about. The type that are in the this build. Oh, so 
I'm not sure. Please send a link, Skulldrazer. Oh, it's so an AliExpress AliExpress order from. Yeah, I, to be honest, I think I might end up just <laughs> buying a big old bulk and being able to sell them uh, on the store. So if people buy the kits, so they can buy the buy the pots as well. Uh, because they're always a pain in the bum to buy it. Funnily enough, somebody was saying about a. Uh, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, a large out of stock time whilst yeah. I was building the Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't think I think it was a mixture of that and also coronavirus and stuff. Because for that for that thing, I had to buy three thousand potentiometers. It wasn't a cheap time. Like it was, yes, it was an awful expense. Okay, getting stuff done. So I am left with some headers, the power socket, LEDs, uh, and the it, regulator. And the regulator, yeah. Do the LEDs to have be to honest, be uh, mounted I think to anything? You should you should wait for the LEDs and the yeah. display until you get the right potentiometers because it's always yeah. good to have it all nicely lined up on the panel. Yeah, gotcha. So I can do these and trims when, then. Um, yeah, pop, pop them on. Um, so actually, uh, no, it might be better. Side. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Like I've designed them so they, the most annoying thing I've found for uh, fine tuning, don't worry about them. I, I'd, I'd leave those until the next time. Okay. Concentrate on finishing the back, and then when you get the right potentiometers, we'll go to the front. But yeah, the preset potentiometer is on the front, so you can adjust it whilst it's in the actual module. See what I mean? Uh, in the <laughs> maybe. I haven't got. I haven't got a. Uh, I haven't orientated myself into which way up anything goes yet. Uh, so this this how does this fit together ultimately oh so that turn, turn it around upside down uh, the, yeah it goes upside down so you'll see that everything that's got a symbol on the side oh I lost you uh, stuff like that Oh, is sorry all... I lost you there for a minute yeah he's, yeah, yeah so you, you'll notice so that... all of the symbols are on that side so like the leds the presets the uh display and stuff go on that side so maybe worry about that after so because they all require sort of lining up with the panel yeah. you know okay. if you've ever built like i don't know like um do you remember like uh, i'm sure like the stasis leak or something like um you put the potentiometers in and then you bolt them to the panel and then yeah. you do the soldering yeah well, totally. it's, it's the same with the leds and the preset potentiometers gotcha so I can stick this power bit in. Yeah, you can plop that in. Anything else around here? Oh, that's looking good. Uh, Sean Blue, I draw the circuits on KI CAD. KI CAD. Uh, Hex 7, I appreciate the trim pots on the front. Yeah, it's the uh, same. It's uh, like the the annoying thing sometimes when you realise you haven't fully calibrated a certain module and you have to take it out again to actually calibrate it when you know when they could just easily be on the front to be calibrated. So you're saying those little holes on the front are for these ones here? The presets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's for your trims will be sticking through there or accessible yeah, through so there. You, gotcha. Yeah, so you use gotcha. a right, use right, a flat right, plate. Right. And funnily enough, like if you they actually line up exactly so I'd just have a turn around and have a look at a finished one and you'll yeah. see that they line up exactly to the holes Brilliant. so they're flush with the panel yeah. so it means you can yeah you just yeah. go in and give them a twist uh, one, a one, uh, one thing I would say on the on the bomb with that they're listed as potentiometers and so oh really and so if I was looking at them on the link going well that's a trim knob and it's supposed okay, to be a pot. Right, I'm as... And I'm going, I don't know if that's right. Is that right? I don't know if that's right. Yeah. So that okay, just cool. had me going in circles for a little while. But, you know, 
I'll yeah, update that. I've I've got a little list here of things to update on this bill of materials anyway. So, thank you very much. No worries. Uh, Frank Francis, I was thinking a plus minus six octaves. Which was what's that you talking about? Oh, are you talking about the um, the fine tune knob? That's just plus minus six semitones. Even though actually it's more like. I don't know, because that ends up being 13, doesn't it? Oh, no, is it? Maths is not my strong point. <laughs> uh, Frank, that's another thing. That's uh, the inspiration for the uh, trim pots being on the front. And they're all on the front for most of them, like this uh, attenuverter thing. Um, yeah, MS-10 and MS-20 have them on the front, which is good. Francis has bought too many 12 way. I accidentally ordered 20 12 way, 20 12 position rotary switches. Ah, yeah, Frank, actually, I have got a suggestion of what you can use for those 24. So, uh, I have got something somewhere. I built one one time. Basically, you can make a, uh, a sequencer out of them, like a 12 channel drum sequencer that's monophonic so let's say you use a uh, a 4017 chip or you use the arduino code that is from uh, a sequencer video i did on youtube a while back but if you get the voltage coming out of that into the 12 way pot you wire all of the 12 outputs of it into an output pot on all of them you can make a make a sequencer maybe <laughs> Looks like Robin got the good solder sucker. What it's, solder sucker? Ooh. It's a classy one, this one. It's an engineer's that one, That is fancy. Says. Yeah. The end doesn't cool. melt. It's really nice, like the end not melting too much. So what, should, cool. I, what should we do next, if anything? Oh, I really don't know. Um, <laughs> where are you at? I've got the regulator in, as you say. Uh, capacitors are in, that's in. Um, I've, yeah, got a, so I guess... I've got something here not sure what that is and there's a header uh, at this end do you have the not sure what that is do you have the Molex pin or, or even just a pin header um, for that these things what do you have in your bags I've got ooh, ooh. I've got a lot of female stuff no I haven't a lot of male stuff going on yeah so um, it can you can get away with the male stuff just so I've got uh, these 11 11 legged no 10 way single row no is that right i thought these were 11 legged why did i think that i don't know no is it 10, 10 or legged. 11? yeah 10 legged oh yeah oh well um in this one it's a molex connector but you could probably get away with that so what was i, I thought the molex the connector materials. what was the molex connector do you have a molex connector was that something that I? I thought that was a, I thought that was this power one here. Uh, that's a multi comp, but it might work. Uh, it's a Molex. Well, but though, hey, that, they, that, that needs... Molex is a brand. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? That goes there. The Molex connector or just solder wire directly for the rotary. Switch. Yes. Ah, so yes. That is the one. No, about... I watched you do that in the video, and I thought, sod it, I'll just do wire to wire. That's fine. I ain't worried oh, about that. So yeah, that one. Okay, yeah. So, so that's this lot here. Anything. Yeah, you don't have to solder anything into that finger majiggy. Yeah, look, so you got a bag of wire. Yeah, it was, okay, it was either so that or I had to break something in order to get wire out of it. So I thought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you only need to do that pin header at the bottom then. Okay. So just go for the male or the female. It's up to you. <laughs> uh, what if this one of these? I thought I took one of these out already. I'm losing my mind. Yeah, uh, but if that fits, this is the last, the last bit anyway. So it's all good. Yeah, it's one pin too few. Is it? Uh, don't worry about that. Two That's pins too few. There's two grounds at the other end. 
Yeah, so just put it in the middle. Yeah. Put it in the middle? Just do yeah. it like that. Yeah, that'll be cool. fine. Just uh, solder one leg in. Yeah. Check if it's straight. Solder the rest. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is the most awkward bits, I think, these headers, because they're quite hard to get uh, flat. Yeah, yeah. So I just always, yeah, just, just one leg and then this cross bear. This cross bear. That's yeah, pretty. No, it's not pretty good. <laughs> Put this on there. Oh, I got yawns now. At some point, Robin is going to discover copper braid. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to find what works for you. That's pretty straight. I'm quite I'm relatively happy with that in the world. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> it just needs to bend a little bit. That's better. Cool. Okay. Well, that's pretty much coming along, oh. I think. Oh, there's yep. another one here. Look, what's that for? That's uh, another one I of those. I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. I wouldn't worry about that for now. It's basically, that one is a backwards link for a master module for oscillators. So you can like plug in like three or four oscillators into the same control inputs. Okay. But don't worry about that. Don't worry about for that. Now. I'm sure you can pop it in later when you if you find you want one. Of those. Oh, actually, I can see there's something missing. Oh, no, no, it isn't. I'm just looking at the back of the potentiometer footprints. Yeah. Am I? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I'm going crazy. So I think I suggest the best thing to do is get those potentiometers right, and I guess we shall reconvene at some point. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I'll what I'll do, yeah, I'll get I'll fill in all the gaps with the bits that um that I'm missing, and I will. Well. Ooh. Um, boo. I will. Uh, yeah, I might. I don't know. I'll see. I'll see. Yeah, I'll, go I'll, for I'll, it. I'll give you a shout, and we'll see where we are. I mean, it may yeah, be that see, I just want to crack on, but you know, we'll. Uh, yeah, crack we'll definitely, on. It's fine. It's fine. We'll definitely get together at least one more time during this whole thing because it's this whole really thing been interesting. Uh, that's Let's cool. See where I get to? Yeah, it looks neat. It looks like it's going to work, but. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's been good. Awesome. I think I'll get it. Uh, it was very interesting to watch it go and watch yeah. you build it. And uh, Frank Francis, yeah, this uses exactly the same power supplies and inputs as the Eurorack. So it's just a Eurorack connection. Yes. So it's 12, plus and minus 12 volts, not not 15. So do you reckon yeah. I could, could mod that to fit the case? Something like that? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Because uh, my plan for the case, I don't know if I can get to that. I, get to that? I might be able to get to that. Ugh. Just to show you. I'll pull that bit out. Oh, no. That's, that's the Deckard's dream bit. That one is. Get out of the way. Ooh. Oh, is that the case for the Deckard's dream? Yeah. So the, the case for this. <clears throat> Ugh. Is this fella? Oh wow! Well, that is that is gonna be yeah, that'll be cool. Which is an old bit of luggage, stick a couple of rails in there. Well, two rows of rails. I'm expecting maybe three. Are you so, going uh, wooden rails or are you going? No, just uh, I, ooh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. There we go. I've got a. Uh, I've had these. No, I can't pick them up now. They're attached to something. But just those regular okay. metal. Um, threaded ah, bars, yeah. bars of stuff. Cool. I mean, I assume the screw holes and stuff are just Eurorack type size, aren't they? 
Yeah, 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 they're all the same, yeah. Yeah. It's just me cool. setting them further apart than I was planning to. So, yeah, they should fit a couple of rows in there. I think that would be a good... Yeah, it's just just 20 centimetres. It looks like, to be honest, you might be able to fit three rows in there. Maybe. But Maybe. I don't know, what's that, like, 60 centimetres? I don't know. Hey, what are you going to do? Anyway, that was really, really interesting, really, really good to see it. Yeah. Nice. Well, look, I mean, you've put in a good load of time, mate, so I should probably <laughs> I should probably let you go. And it's getting too it's late good. To, to do things uh, without really stuffing it up, I think, if we're yeah. not too careful. Well, so, to be uh, honest, I think you're at, you're at the end of what you can do at the minute, to be honest. Yeah. after The pod potentiometers are the next step. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that's brilliant. So, yeah. So thanks ever so much for doing that. It's, it's been it's been really nice talking our way through this. I wonder if that's been interesting to people. There seems to be 193 people knocking around, which is nice. Nice it's of them. Good. Yeah. Are you having Hello, a lovely everybody. time? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, cool. Have you so been... Hey. Oh no, sorry, carry on. No. Please do. So it's been a it's been a really good week. I had this idea of doing a module a week, not a module a week, a DIY week, simply because I couldn't seem to find the time to do it. Uh, I had all these kits building up and things to do, and it's like I just got to find how can I schedule it in. And so I made it like an international festival week of building modular, just for myself. Yeah. You know, we had stamps made and everything. So uh, and that's it's worked out really well, you know. So I've built so far this week. I built a Bifaco Perkle. I built a sample slicer, which sadly doesn't work at the moment. I'm still. Why doesn't it work? Which it's, what uh, aspect of the sample slicer? It's the clock. The clock won't take a clock. It sits there just slowly glowing at me. And whatever I stick into it doesn't seem to... It won't clock. So it's only ever running uh. at one speed and therefore the speed control doesn't work either. So I'm working with Jan on that at the moment and can't quite work out there doesn't seem to be a simple thing it seems to be something else but it will i'm sure uh, it will present itself at some point um, so but i've done that i did the stasis leak i got the 3bt to build to build tomorrow and the bit more decker's dream i might try to sneak another kit in tomorrow if i can it's the other the 3bt really afterwards yeah so what's the 3bt is that a 303 no no 3pt you see that? Or can oh, you see it under here better? Three P T. Ah, ah, yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. It's and a that's lovely. That's what you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's a lovely presented kit. I'm gonna do this tomorrow. Ooh, it comes with like it's got like a hardware manual. Oh wow! Which is crazy, crazy town. So yeah, nice, nice that bunch of awesome. bits. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow. That's cool. There's a live stream. That would be lovely. So yeah, it's been a. Gr it's, I've thoroughly enjoyed it this week. I've had a lovely time. It's been hard on my shoulders, I think. I've uh, been held held a lot of fumes. Yeah, it's yeah, in, that, it's all in that good fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, awesome, man. Well, it was lovely chatting and all yeah. that stuff. I think I'm gonna. Uh, I've got. I've got a couple more jobs before I go to bed. I'm. I'm knackered. Yeah. I've got to go to sleep. Well, in that case, people, we will we, we will close it down at this point and bid you all good night. So thanks ever so much for watching. As I say, tomorrow, the Robo 3PT, I'm going to be building here at 8 o'clock. Live build until it's done or broken is the plan. Saturday is a Deckard's dream. Sunday, I am leaning towards having a beer and just talking about the week. But I'll confirm, yeah. that. confirm that on Saturday night. But otherwise, thanks ever so much for watching. I hope that's been helpful. And thanks so much, Sam, for for coming in and chipping in it's been it's been brilliant it's been so oh, good thank you for having me it was yeah, a no, very it was very it was very fun yeah very you're welcome good. so i will uh i'll press a button to end the stream but you hang on sam just for a second and we'll have a just a, a two second chat before you go and uh take care everybody Cheerio. thank you very much for way. watching i'll find the button